How's it going ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Sixkiller and welcome back to Divinity Original Sin 2. Now I'm hoping there's still somebody to talk to in this town after decimating their population, but um, we'll see what anyone has to say if there's anyone fucking left. Let's talk to you. Okay, you guys just don't like me, huh? Glad to see you well. Anything more? So you've got spells as well. Oh look, Here you've got... Yourself, lizard. Oh, you've got summons? Conjure Incarnate, I want that. Power Infusion. Soulmate. Elemental Totem. Hmm. Hmm, that could be pretty good too. What are these? Arcane Stitch. Healing Ritual. Ooh. It'll jump to nearby allies. That's pretty good. Restoration. We've already got Restoration. Ice Fan. Global Cooling. Winter Blast. 22 to 25 water damage set chilled status. That's probably better than that hail one that I've got. I want that too. Healing Ritual. Oh, there's so much stuff I want to buy. So much stuff I want to buy. I'm running out of monies. Till later then. Till later then. Indeed. Thank you. Keeping it together, free. I'm yeah. right. You learn those, and you learn. You're safe among friends. Conjure and can it. it. All right. Let's see. So now you've got Conjure Incarnate, that's good. Low, so we'll drop that ice one for this one. Healing Ritual could be really good as well. Don't know what we're going to drop for it though, to be honest. Maybe Shocking Touch, because we don't get many opportunities to use that. Realistically. Yeah, that should be good for now. Alright, let's keep talking to people. Well, See who else there is. In a sweat. The carved figure is a resplendent sight in this ramshackle village. Place your palm against the elaborate mosaic at its base. Your touch creates a ripple across the mosaic as if it were water and not stone. A comforting warmth spreads through you, starting at your fingertips. Alright. We can teleport now. That's cool. Keep to yourself. Okay, fuck you, lady. People don't like lizards around here, it seems. Could be worse, you know. When the war comes, I won't have it said that I fraternized with the enemy. So good day to you. Fucking hell, these people are douchebags. Prices are up. Quality is down. Times are tough when it's no thanks to you, lizard. Although, I, I mean, they were probably not very nice to me before, but they're probably really not nice to me now that I've killed everybody in town and there's blood in the streets. Wars are brewing, my friend, and we may find ourselves on different sides, in which case prices will go up. Yeah, yeah. Special right. prices for you while we're still friends. Hey, we're friends. Is hell, my friend. I like being but friends. Very good for business. Oh, you've got yeah. stuff too? I want that, first aid. Oh, tactical retreat, I want that one as well. Oh my god. So many cool fucking abilities. What is this one? The more the merrier. Gain a damage boost for every nearby character. And you've got weapons. Dude. I love this place. This is the best place. We're coming back here later. Definitely. Can I afford that now? Just. Oh, shields and stuff. Alright, we gotta go make some money in, in Reaper's Coast and then come back. FN. Learn tactical retreat and first aid. Dude, this is great. This town is fantastic. I love it here. That was us. We slain them. We slain the did him. Okay, stop yelling. Many a latest, my friend. The war, the bishop, the queen. What tickles your fancy? The war you mentioned? Figured you'd ask me about that. Ain't looking too good for you, lizards. 
Word is, the Divine Order's gonna hit your empire and hit it hard. You remember what happened to the elves, don't you? Ain't no one left standing when you treat them to death, Frog. You're lucky to be so far from home, and no mistake. The Bishop. Seven, save us. Stabbed in the back he was by them vile, low-born, treacherous seekers. Kill them all, I say. Do them like Magister Raymond did, old Lady Siva. That'll teach them traitors. I mean, they doomed us all, didn't they? The son of the divine is dead. Gone. Who'll save us now? The Queen. Jolly Justinia, Queen of the Dwarves. Ha! Scourge, more like. Here's twenty or so, noble gentlemen. No one knows what they did wrong, if anything, and she has them stripped and whipped all the way to the execution grounds. Didn't even give them the dignity of the sword, no sir. Had them all hung. Real slow like. You ask me, and I say she's mad as a mink with its tail on fire. Queen or no queen. This town's huge. Like, this town is fucking huge. We're gonna be here forever. How's it going, guys? Pretty good, ain't he? Probably ain't against writing a poem for a lizard either, if you're all polite and whatnot. Okay. You have interrupted my newest masterpiece! The bard clears his throat and gargles on his own saliva. He then returns to his poem, but his voice cracks mid-verse. Hmm. Well, never you mind. Every sonnet I compose is a masterpiece. And my muse has been begging me to write something new. Wait, you might be just the stimulus I needed. I shall craft a rhyme for you and your race. All I ask in return is a handful of coins. It's an offer of a lifetime. Let's do this one. Puff out your chest. Surely you wouldn't demand payment from a hero as renowned as yourself. Hmm. Normally I'd argue with you, but you do have a certain look about you. <laughs> Very well. But if I am to write a first-rate work, you must face some difficult questions. Are you prepared to answer? Ready as will ever be. He stares at you for a few torturing moments. Let's cut to the chase, lizard. Your kind has built an empire on the backs of slaves, reaping the rewards of the innocent's toil. Do you condemn your kin? Admit that while the empire's practice may be tradition, it is cruel by any definition. He smiles a crooked smile and runs a hand through his greasy hair. It isn't just slaves that suffer, though, is it? You eternally seek perfection, though offer no room in the creaking empire machine to the sage or the savant. What say you? Inform the empire has long lived precisely because every kin understands their place. Hmm. This superiority complex, this haughtiness, so cold. Others see you for what you truly are. Monsters. Loveless, heartless, ruthless. You know it to be true. Nod and assent, many akin have overlooked true love in favour of order and ambition, so many lives wasted on drudgery. The bard hems and haws, then bellows his next words to anyone who might hear. To all lovers of verse, I bring glorious news. I have completed another modern classic. Listen now, and bask in its resounding refrain. An empire built upon the backs of slaves. Get you something, friend. Does not deserve the faintest breath of praise. I don't want to listen to your poem, goddammit. Arguing with Mac is like giving medicine to the dead. He's as stubborn as a corpse and smells the part to boot. No wonder Papa Thrash gives him the stink any time he tries to go downstairs. I don't give a rat's ass what they say downstairs. The Magisters is all that stands between us and the Void Woken. We should be grateful. He fixes you with a stare, looks you up and down, weighs you up, the cut of your cloth, the weight of your bag. A moment passes. Then a smile creases his face. A smile carefully constructed to look friendly and authentic. A smile that doesn't reach his eyes. Greeting, stranger. Looking to ease the pain of a decaying world. You're in the right place. Beers are ordered at the bar, but can I interest you in a nourishing bowl of stew? No thanks. Drunk. An elf sways on her chair, her eyes focused on the counter in front of her, where she has six glasses in a row. 
With the nails of two fingers, she's pressing red welts into her forearm. She slides one of the drinks towards you. Her head bobbling heavily on her neck. She <laughs> the sparkling ale. Bobbling. Down the hatch. Down the hatch. Um. Yeah. Shrug and drink it down in one long gulp. Nothing like a glass of the good stuff to smudge everything into a pretty shape. <laughs> she slides another glass of ale toward you. Its contents sparkle in the dim bar light. I like this lady. Bottoms up. This <laughs> is still warm from the first glass. The second seems all the more attractive. Gulp it down. Cheers to you, me, and and. Her gaze swivels around the room. Damien's dull knife. This place is horrible. Never mind. Cheers to you, me, and me again. Another. Yeah, <laughs> uh, what do we got? Screw your face up and look at her closely. She's not like any of the elves you've met so far. What do you mean? The way she talks, you'd mistake her for a dwarf if you didn't know better. Ah, fat lot of good that I do me around here. All dwarfies can't seem to catch a break in these parts. So, to the dwarves. Okay. Ah, down the old ouch. <laughs> oh, reckon that was. Reckon that was. Reckon a one too many. <laughs> <laughs> Great. A prim woman in a starched apron wipes a glass with a clean rag. She pins you with blue, steel sharp eyes as you approach the bar. Blessings upon our Lucian, seven times divine. Tell there's no sense in passing a blessing to a dead girl. With surprising agility for a woman of her age, she reaches over the bar and swings a hand toward your face. You brace yourself for the incoming blow, but she instead points her finger into your face. We don't speak of his holiness that way in this establishment. Uh, apologize, explaining you must have misplaced your manners somewhere on the long road to Driftwood. Well, you can't be blamed if your mother didn't teach you any better. That can't be helped now, I suppose. Not everyone received the same education as my Niles. He's a magister now. He's oh my dead. god. So what are you after? Niles? You're Niles' mother? She... Oh. Oh. <laughs> We've only got Amber Ale, I'm afraid. Can't spare the potatoes for hard up. Oh, you're Niles' mum? But Niles is like evil. <laughs> What's down here? <laughs> Hold it. Papa, no, no. You, no go. Tell me you're looking for someone named Loha. He grins unpleasantly. Loha didn't tell me to let anyone of your description in. So why should I? Uh, let's try the hero thing again. Tell him you seek wrongs to right in the darkest corners of Rivalon. <laughs> it's already mad as a bag of cats down there, and I've no intention of flinging another major yowler in there. Scoot! Ah. Uh -huh. Please. You again. I told you to scram once. Don't make me say it with my fist. Rub your fingers together in the universal symbol for bribery. You can't buy my friendship. But you can buy ten seconds of me eyeballs examining the ground for, well, let's say, a small fortune. You look like you'd be good for it. Uh. Okay. He pockets the coin and gazes dramatically at the ground mere inches from your feet. Thank you. Alright, what do we got? Sort of a dungeony type deal? I hope so. Go check it out. We're still drunk. Looks so like it's gonna last for a while. Our intelligence is down from being drunk. I find that very offensive. What is that? What do we got? Ooh, pouch. Air essence and gold. There you go, we got our money back already. Hey fellas. Look at that. A fresh face. Shrewd and good to meet you, Governor. What's your poison then? A sip or a smoke? Wave your hand through the wafting smoke and have to ask if that's Drudene you're smelling. Aye, so it is. But not just any Drudene. Oh no. 
My own special blends. Further down's the arena, see? And the gladiators are always on the lookout for... an edge. I give them that edge. You could say that my darling herbs flower in the flesh and blossom in the brain. So, if you're interested, Governor, all you have to do is use your imagination. Maybe Help later. Make you blue. Oh, yo. Oh, Lizard Patron. You don't even have a name. Mercy, mercy. You do, though. Oh, wait. Ifan. Ifan approaches you, a drink in his hand and a wide smile on his face. He clearly feels at home in this grimy place. Want a drink? Sure. He grins and hands you a drink, full of good cheer. It's really been some adventure so far, eh? You're enjoying the time on the road. One must stop to appreciate the good moments, right? And if this isn't a good one... I don't know what is. If Anne looks around at the under tavern, contentment plain in his eyes. Ah, well, plenty of drinks to be had when the world's saved. Clink your drink and cheers. To All right, let's start talking to people. The tigers fly, the leopards lie, and you, and you, oh! But I know you, don't I? I have seen you in the night, the awoken one, hounded by dying gods. Oh, okay, you're a dreamer. Look at your name. Dorotia the Decadent Hail, One. darling. Call me Dorotia. She draws close. You feel her breath on your neck, hot, moist. Mmm. Oh, yes. I have something that you want. But I only bargain with those I deem deserving. Those who have accomplished great things. So, tell me, are you worthy of my gift? What are you offering? Handsome, I must consider your merits before I answer your questions. Why, I wouldn't tease you with a gift I could never offer. You don't think me... Cruel, do you? You escape Fort Joy. Isn't that the kind of worthiness she's seeking? If you swam your way here, I might consider that a notable triumph. But honey, I know you didn't swim. You'll have to give me something more impressive than that. Surely you've accomplished something of note. Champion of Fort Joy Arena? Indeed. Hmm. This is acceptable. You are nearer the one than most self-described heroes I've known. So, tell me, are you ready for me to grant you your greatest desire? Your greatest desire? How could you possibly grant such a thing? I can't. Not yet. First, you must look into my ring and tell me what you see there. Okay. Gaze into the gem, my lovely... She flashes her ring at you, and you stare at the luminescent stone at its center. You are floating on a current of pure source, surrounded by a kaleidoscope of colors and fuzzy images. On the horizon looms a dark silhouette. As you approach, a beam of light washes the shadow away, revealing to you... Oh wow. A towering oak with standing gale force winds. A curved quill made from a swan feather. Its barbs are as soft as kitten's fur. A gold chest covered with ornate runes and overflowing with emeralds. A stately dragon. It spreads its violet wings and deafens you with its roar. A transparent chrysalis. The blue butterfly, butterfly within looks ready to break free. Let's go with the dragon. Mm, yes. I see you clearly now. Mm, it is power you seek. To conjure maelstroms and command the light to drive away shadow. I will fulfill this desire. In return... I ask for one thing in return. A kiss. How's that supposed to help either one of you? Dorothea sighs. A fusion of a kitten's purr and a cockroach's clacking. Ah. <sighs> for me to help you, our souls must touch. And a kiss brings our souls closer, does it not? It shall fulfill both your desire and mine. Okay, fine. Most delicious. Meet me around the corner and come alone. An audience is not required. 
I don't want to come alone. But I guess I will. But that scares me because she might turn into some monster and kill my ass. Kissing spot. That's over here. Ew. Is she a spider monster? I bet she is. Mm, skeletons and stuff. Come on then. sees you and heaves a shuddering sigh. She bites into her lower lip with enough force that a drop of blood seeps out. Blood and something else. Something green. You guys come up. Darling, I admit I wish we could share more carnal pleasures. Yet I think a kiss is the height of intimacy. Now come closer and receive your soul's desire. You draw closer and close your eyes, eager to feel her lips on yours. Yet her lips do not press against yours, and her hands do not caress your face. She is a woman no longer, but a were spider. Suppress your fears and accept the kiss? Did that work? Did that help? Her fang painlessly sinks into your neck. You still hear her words, though they sound muffled, as if filtered through a glass wall. You desired power, and so it's yours. My venom seeps into every pore. We part ways now. I'll remember this moment. Hold on, she's a spider. Did she just drink your blood? You've seen my true self. There's nothing more to know. She kisses her forefinger, then presses it against your scaled forehead. Now go. New talent. Spider's kiss. Okay. Talent. What does that mean exactly? Is it a skill? No. Is it over here? Minus two constitution, plus two wits. That sucks. I don't want minus two constitution. I mean, buffing his constitution this whole fucking time. Ah, dicks. Alright, whatever. Alright, so we got a dude to talk to up here. Fuck this town. We're going to be in this town for a few episodes, I think. What do you want? Boss is busy. I'm here on business. Good. Boss could use some good news. Listen up. Don't waste his time. These are explosive times. Be respectful. What do you want? Boss is busy. Listen up. Yeah, yeah. Not no more she ain't. What's happening here? What are you doing to this poor lady? I can't interrupt the conversation. Oh wait. Here we go. I you up from girl to woman, Marla. Like you was my own. He lifts his right arm, showing a white bandage beneath his ribs. A wet red spot shows through. This ain't the thanks I expected. Who sent you? <laughs> the formidable dwarf slams his fist on the side table. You hear a loud crack. Enough! Do you know they killed Anna? Do ya? Start talking sense or I'll take that tongue right out of your mouth and fry it for supper. Mm, stay quiet. Bart, Kate, get her to talk or bleed her out. She ain't one of mine anymore. His sneer travels from the restrained dwarf to you. And you. You better have a damn good reason for coming here. Could not talk to me like that, asshat. Brave lad. All sitting here now. I hope for your sake you've got good news for me. What did you think was gonna happen? Depends what he's interested in. But there are things you want to know too. You came into my ass, bub. Not the other way around. He winces loudly and holds a hand to the bandage on his side. The large red spot in its center has grown larger and wetter. How'd you come by that wound? Family dispute. Lucky for me, she caught an old wound. Scar slowed down the knife. So, how'd you make it out of Fort Joy? Ask how he knows about that. You made it past plenty of magisters undetected, except we didn't. I've got people. They've got people. People talk. 
The magisters never shut up long enough to listen. When we leave, we never leave a magister alive. But me, I love a good story. Here's one I heard lately. A group of strangers landed on the beaches outside town. Meister Seavers people. You one of her little seekers? Chasing down Godwoken and begging them to save us all. Doesn't sound convinced to their cause. All just been telling us all kinds of this and that about Godwoken. Haven't seen any evidence of them myself. So no, I'm not convinced. So you can't blame him. For all the orders bluster, things are only getting worse. We're swirling the drain. If someone doesn't plug it, we'll slip down easy as you please. So, what do you want? Ask him if he knows why you're here. Reckon I do. Knowing Siva, she sent you looking for sorcerers, I bet. And it just so happens I can help you. Depending on what you can do for me. What do you have in mind? He gestures towards the bandage across his side. Had a bit of family trouble lately. My girl Marla got it in her head to come after me with a short blade. That ain't like Marla. Ain't like her to pull the silent treatment either. Something's going on. And wouldn't you know it, that blade she used wasn't any normal bit of steel. Belonged to another of my people. Guy's name is Mordus. Bit of a loner, but smart as hell. I sent a few guys to go check on him. See if he knew what had got into Marla, but no one can find him. I'd like a word with the guy. Sounds reasonable. Where should we start? Glad you see it that way. No one's seen him in a good few. I've got some people checking out his house near the tavern now, though. Tell them I sent you, and they'll let you know what they've found. Truth is, they might be glad to see you. Reckon a sorcerer will have better luck finding one of their own. Anything else we should know? Well, like I said, Maldus is a special guy. A sorcerer, matter of fact. Maybe even one of the ones Seavers after. If there's something you want to find out from him, you might want to ask before I have my word with him. Okay. Here, you can take this off my hands. More suited to your kind, really. Good luck. That sounds uh, racist, but uh, whatever. Is it good for you, though? Yes, it is. 19 to 20. Plus 2 to 4 piercing. We'll drop it in the place of Hackham's Razor. Hackham's Razor will take this spot. Rupture what? Rupture tendons. Ooh, fuck. That's nasty. That's nasty. Step off, lest you want a taste. Okay, okay. Calm your tits. No, we can't go that way. Drudene. Alright, what else have we got? Fuck, this place is huge. It's huge! Let's go this way. Can't reach? Dicks. We can go over here. What is this? That's another statue? This place is so massive. It's intimidatingly massive. Cool, now we can teleport. So this is the arena. I don't think we're ready to fight in the arena, because that was one of the last things we did in the other place. I feel like we'd get ourselves fucking killed, probably. Don't really want to do that right now. Don't really want to get killed right now. Alright, who are you fellas? Down for a little scuffling and tussling. Let's see if you got some fight in ya. Nah, yeah, we'll come back to this. We'll come back, I'm not ready for this yet. At least we know where it is. Let's uh, head back up. See what else we can find before we run out of time. We're actually pretty much out of time already. We're going to hit that guy's house though before we end this one, I think. I'm not happy about that spider's kiss ability. Minus two constitution? That's bullshit. And we get plus wits? Fuck off with your plus wits. Take your plus wits and go fuck yourself with them. Yeah. Mortis' house is over there. Alright, we'll get to that. Shortly. The experience of a, lifetime is a weathered woman in a dirty sea captain's tunic babbles breathlessly to herself. The bell rings are warning and the tide is on the turn. And I without my compass. She has the compass, she must have been captain. 
Ask where your ship lies birthed. The ship is in the locker. On the bottom in the rocky shallows. And all are drowned but me. And yet, can you hear? The bell rings on. The bell haunts me yet, and it would drive me mad. We hear no bell. Perhaps I am already mad. But I swear I hear the bells. Please, make it stop. She buries her head in her hands and cries. Make it stop. I don't know how I can make it stop without killing you, I guess. It's a shame, it is. An absolute shame. What's a shame? Alexander, slaughtered like a supper lamb. Poor dear. He ain't right. He was a douchebag. That ain't right. Never thought I'd say this. But I hope they round up them sorcerers for good. I ain't needing one sick and avoid working on me. You said it, Hilka. You're a true patriot. You're a fucking moron. Oh Would crap, Magisters. Tell her you want the very best for all peoples. Huh. I want another beer and a bowl of stew. Which of us is more likely to get what they want, do you think? Optimism is a moral duty. Guess that makes me a sinner. Perhaps you can help us settle an argument. What's the disagreement? Thatcher here is one of my dearest friends, but she isn't the brightest. Thatcher grins, hello. That's not very nice. Our mate Boris got posted to Fort Joy for consorting with lizards. And Thatcher here still fancies a turn around the park with Lovric's lizard. I say she'd be sleeping with the enemy. What say you? They look at you expectantly. Um. The world's going to hell anyway. She should have fun while she still can. <laughs> Thatcher looks victorious. Eden looks annoyed. You're as bad as she is. Get lost then, you're no use to me. Eden turns back to her drink. Thatcher smiles goodbye. Nice. I'm not... I'm not here to be of use to you, asshat. That is not my purpose. A dozing adventurer. Weathered and rugged, the man sleeps soundly. He mumbles in his slumber. <sighs> There's bad things in the caves. Bad dwarf things. Wake him up. His eyes flicker open, but he looks like he's still asleep. Ask about the bad dwarf things in the caves. <sighs> Blood and oil do mix, after all. Better wake him up again. His eyes flicker open, but he looks like he's still asleep. What do you mean, blood and oil don't mix, surely? The island is ruined and doesn't have a name. Don't go there. Clap your hands to wake him up. His eyes flick wide open, but he's clearly asleep. Ask about this ruined, nameless island. <sighs> There's no graveyard on the island. Stay away from the graveyard. We're going to find out some interesting information here. Keep waking him His up. His eyes flick wide open, but he's clearly asleep. Mm, sawdust and wolves, my brother. Sawdust and wolves. His eyes flick up. <sighs> Arcs for Lucian's day sounds nice, my brother. His eye. <sighs> he goes back to sleep. All right, that's the best we could do. Here we go, we got a journal update. Fuck, we got so many missions here already. It's ridiculous. As you approach the silken robe noble, Ifan does a double take and laughs in recognition. He pulls you to one side. I know this man, and he's not at all what he seems. A moment. Go on then. Ifan bounds forward and embraces the man, all effusive greetings. As they part, talking animatedly, the man's beard slips sideways down his face. He's wearing a disguise. Ifan laughs as he straightens the beard. They chatter away for some time, using a guttural cant you struggle to understand. At one point, the man says something and looks over at you intently. Ifan waves his hand and laughs. Let them continue. The man hunkers down and seems to be sketching a rough map on the floor using an apple, some playing cards, and a fistful of threads pulled up from the carpet. Fuck, what is he, MacGyver? Jesus. Ifan <laughs> claps the man on the back and turns to leave. Well, now we know the way to the sawmill. And we know Roost thinks I'm bringing you there as part of the Godwoken contract. Hear that? Roost's camped out at the sawmill. Oh my god. Doesn't this room strike you as eerie? There's a chill in the air, a, a deeper darkness in the shadows. But, of course, I should hold my tongue and stand guard. All's well as long as my lord's coffers are safe. 
Indeed. But I really want to rob them, to be honest. Of course. Should we pick lock this fucking shit? Sabio, do you have any lock picks? And I'm saying you can trust me. I can see a sorcerer from a mile away. She doesn't have any lock picks. That's a shame. I was gonna break in there. I wanna go in there. Looks like there's more upstairs as well. Oh, we can't get in there either. We'll have to come back if we can find some lock picks, I guess. My stomach, my lord. Perhaps I could go to All right, well, we're done here, I guess, until we can break into that room at least. We got what's his face's house to explore. Oh my god, we got so much to do in this town. I love this town. I love this town. And I'm feeling a lot more powerful now, must admit, with the new options we have available. Does not deserve the Tactical retreat, that's just so cool. We got some great abilities now. Some real great abilities. Very nice. Oh wow, that does just heal everyone nearby, doesn't it? That's great. Costs two though. And it's got a long cooldown. But then we have two heal spells. Alright, well, we got a lot more to do, but we're gonna wrap this episode up, and then, holy shit, we've got town and town and more town. Effie's Emporium, Mortis's house. But we'll keep uh, pushing our way through town in the next episode. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.